I worked at a utility company. It was um, a night shift, um, um, 5 p.m. until 1 a.m. in the morning. The stop right before mine, Lafayette Street. Um, a man steps into the train. He sat across from me and he didn't say anything, but he just began to just stare at me. He had his hand in his pocket. And then my first thought is, oh my God, does this guy have a gun or something? I got and I moved away. And then just as I moved away, my stop came. I kind of briskly walked away from the, the subway without trying to seem too frightened by him because I didn't want his, him to feel, I didn't want to be intimidated by him. I'm riding home my normal route on the subway and the same man from the previous night steps onto the train at the same stop. And then my heart stopped because then I realized this, he's doing this on purpose. And, and it, it, it's beginning to escalate. He leaned over and, you know, he, he, he sat with his legs open as if to say, yes, I'm sizing you up without saying it. I went home, I'm feeling pretty comfortable, and I, it's over. Whatever, whatever that issue was, it's resolved. It's gone, it's over. I push the door and I'm standing in the vestibule. I hear footsteps behind me and I turn around. Fear just, just washed over me when I realized it's him. It's the man from the subway from the two nights prior. And I realize he's followed me home. We're not even two feet apart, maybe maybe inches apart. And he's looking down at me, because he's 6'1", and I'm 5'2", and I'm wearing flat shoes. So I, I literally have to look up at this man. I backed into the corner. I tried to back into the, the corner that was furthest from him, but it's a very small vestibule. I'm trying to decide, do I show fear? Do I fight? Do I, do, what do I do? He reaches inside the coat and he brandishes this knife. It's the kind of knife you use when you're carving a turkey at Thanksgiving. It's a huge knife. He pushes it up under my chin. So his elbow is propped up under my chin and then he takes the knife and he has it under there. I'm looking around trying to get near the mailbox because underneath the mailbox, there were buzzers for each apartment. He tells me to stand away from the mailbox. Still not yelling at me, not raising his voice. He's trying to be very quiet, but he has that controlled monotone type voice where it gave me the impression that this man has done this many times before. He lifted my head almost up and that gave him the room to put the knife immediately under there. And then he asked me for money. And I'm like, this is all to mug me? I'm thinking, okay, this is over. All he wants is some money. He's been following around to see if I had any money. He's rifling through the purse and, and, and he, he pulls out my wallet. I'm thinking, okay, this is life in New York. You're gonna get mugged. And I could, I, could, I could get through this. I could get through this if I just let him have what he wants and he'll go away. But that's not what happened. He says to me, who's upstairs? And I'm like, if this guy thinks he's getting in my house, he's out of his mind. So obviously I lied. And I said, well, my family's waiting for me upstairs. There, there's people upstairs. So he was trying to figure out if I was lying or if I was telling the truth. I, I knew enough to know that I should not allow him to get me to a more secluded location. We're still very close. I mean, so close we could feel each other's breath on each other because now he's pushed up against me against this wall. And then he tells me to get down on the floor of the vestibule and still it doesn't register in my mind what does he what else do you want? I give you I gave you my money. You've intimidated me. You've controlled the situation. You had everything you wanted. And then he tells me to remove my skirt. It was like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde moment where his whatever switch he had 
it was it was it, it was flipped. And now he's more evil. He's yelling at me. He's 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 growling at me. He's pulling me down by my by my clothing and he's ripping my blouse. I'm whimpering, I'm crying. I know exactly what he's what he's trying to do now. I had on a light jacket and I was wearing a skirt and you know you have on pantyhose and all these things that you have to take off to get undressed. So I'm trying to go as slowly as possible with the hope that someone from the building might come in or someone might walk by and see that there's a man on the floor and 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 investigate, but that wasn't to be. I would feel the blade more closely under my neck. I was able to feel my skin separating and I could feel, you could feel the open wound starting to develop. So I didn't want to agitate him any further. And I realized at that moment that I had to comply with this. Or he would, he would just slip my throat right there. And the, the feeling of loss of control is, is, it's just indescribable that I had to consent to this stranger violating me in the most brutal way. All of my things are, are, are scattered around me and I'm on this floor. And this is when I realize that for surety he's done this before because when he exposes himself, he's not wearing any underwear. He's not, he is ready to do this attack. At this point, he's attacking me. He's he's actually penetrated me, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm 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 crying audibly loud. And he, every now and then, he's telling me to shut up, and he's calling me a b, and and he's saying if if I, if I make any more noise, he's gonna effing kill me. He's gonna take this knife, and he's you know he's explaining how gory he's gonna go through this motion of killing me. And I'm laying there, and I'm like. <sighs> What is the better route? Do, 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 you, do, you, do, do I want to die on the floor as a victim, or do I want to live with the stigma of actually being raped? In the middle of being raped, I feel the door hitting me, the outside door, and, it, and the person is pushing against the door. And I look up and I see my neighbor. He pushes his way, he keeps pushing the door and pushing the door until he pushed his way out. My neighbor had his 10-year-old daughter with him. He pushes her behind him. That's when he runs away. He never really talks to the neighbor. He just ran away. About four days into the week that I stayed home from work, I got a call from the police, and they wanted me to come and, I, and identify, to see if I could identify this person in a lineup. So I went there, and lo and behold, he was there. And um, I identified him, and I asked them how did they catch him, and they went into how the next night he attacked a 13-year-old in another building. I survived because God intervened and he sent someone to upset the attack because it was nothing else I could have done to save myself. <laughs>